Hi, I am Siddharth Shah, an application engineer at Analog Devices. In this video, I will be demonstrating ADS Radios Transceiver EDRV9029 with Integrated Digital Pre-Distortion DPD. Before starting, let us understand the components we will be using. The ADRV9029 Evolve Board, which is a quad channel RF wideband transceiver platform. Its integrated DPD adaption engine is used for power amplifier linearization and this device also offers many other features. The ADS9 high speed carrier card which is used for doing all the communication between transceiver, FPGA and computer. Additionally, we have a coupler, driver amplifier, power amplifier and few attenuators. To start with ADS9 setup, connect the Ethernet cable to the Z board and insert the TRX microSD card into SD slot. The card contains API software and drivers for operating the transceiver. Also note, for transceiver test, the switch SW should be in position 1. For transceiver, first connect the ORX cable which is on the bottom side of the board with the coupled port of the coupler and then connect the EVAL with the ADS9 using the FMC connector. For clocking, we will connect the oscillator in SMA port with the signal generator, setting the frequency 122.88 MHz with an amplitude of plus 4 dB. For transmission, connect TX1 channel output to the driver amplifier followed by the power amplifier with the required attenuators. Further, connect the power amplifier output to the input of coupler. The output of coupler is then taken to spectrum analyzer. Once these connections are made, connect the power adapter to ADS9. A red light will glow on micro Z board. After it turns off, power up the transceiver with its adapter and then provide clock input. Let us now open the GUI. After opening the GUI, first you need to configure the IP address and then click on connect. Once GUI shows connected, start the configuration of evolution board. First select a desired use case from the profile table. The use case defines the data rate and the bandwidth for the transceiver. If required, adjust the device configuration options in the initialization tab such as LO frequency and channel mapping. Also enable all the quadrature error correction QEC tabs. Before programming, it is critical to check the clock page and make sure the reference clock selection matches the input clock. Now we are ready to program the device. In case of any error during initialization, check the log file. Once programmed successfully, go to transmit data tab. This tab can be used to generate continuous wave tones, load data vectors, control TX attenuation or run further calibration. In this demonstration, we will use tone generator to transmit signals. For that, go to the tones box and then load a 40 MHz 5G NR signal for all the TX channels and provide a scaling of minus 10 dB. Once you load files for all the channels, click on submit. Now enable the number of transmitter output required and disable the remaining. Provide an appropriate attenuation. For this example, we are using TX1 with 10.7 dB attenuation and press play. The GUI in the spectrum window shows the time and frequency domain data for the waveform. Do enable the observable and QEC tab. Now we can move to the ORX tab. Enable the mapped ORX channel and disable the remaining. Press the play button to see the coupled port data from the TX to ORX. Once verified, we can stop the ORX spectrum. Now let's see the spectrum analyzer to check the ACLR performance. Here you can see minus 29.1 and minus 28.2 dBc at the lower and upper side. To improve this performance, enable integrated DPD system that linearizes the output of the transmitter power amplifier by altering the digital waveform to compensate for non-linearities in the power amplifier response. To enable DPD, follow these steps. Go to the DFE tab and load the DPD model file. Check for any other parameter changes if required. Select the channel on which you want to apply DPD and uncheck the other channels. 
for this demonstration we are using tx1 first click on apply tracking config then click on run path delay after that click on apply model on device from m table and apply model on device from c table now click on enable dpd on selected channels and then click on reset dpd once again click on enable dpd on selected channels to know the dpd status and other information click on get status and statistics it will show no error if the configuration and the settings are done as suggested now let's see the output on the spectrum analyzer we can see the aclr getting improved in the spectrum it shows minus 50.4 and minus 50.2 dbc at the lower and the upper side which meets cgpp specs for 5g the spectrum clearly shows the performance enhancement using dpd for more information please visit analog.com/adrv9029 and if you have any question visit the engineer zone page for wideband transistor family thank you for watching